And here we are with another photo coaching video. Now, if you don't know what a photo coaching video is, I don't blame you. I haven't made one for a year. Photo coaching basically is, as the name suggests, I take a photo and I analyze it and I show you how you can improve your squash based on it. Now, I've only made three videos in the past. Nicole David practicing, Daryl Selby hitting a lob, and a match between uh, Gregory Gaultier and Nick Matthew. Now, links to those videos can be found up here, and if you can't see that link, it is in the text description. Let me take this opportunity to tell you that not every photo you see of a professional player playing squash is suitable for photo coaching. Remember, professional squash players have been playing since they were around 10 years old, some even younger, and they have practiced for thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of hours. They are much stronger than you and me. Now, specifically their footwork and how they use their forearm and their wrist differs significantly from the average club player or can differ significantly. So if you see some picture of some strange movement, don't think that you suddenly have to try and do it that way. You don't, you are not a professional player. And regular viewers will know that that's one of my taglines. You are not a pro but you can train like one. This series of photos consists of five backhands, five forehands, and two bonus forehand ones. I need to tell you that they are not a sequence of perfect swings. So if you're expecting that, this is not what this is about. I saw a photo and I thought, wow, that is a perfect demonstration of exactly what I would like my students to do on the backhand. So I specifically then went looking for other photos that I felt would uh, add to the idea that that's the type of movement. So even though it sounds like a lot 12 photos, five of them on the backhand are almost exactly the same and the five on the forehand are almost exactly the same. They are there to encourage you to do a particular thing, which I'll talk about once we start analyzing the photos. So don't expect a sequence of photos. Nearly all of the photos that you're going to see are players hitting the ball before they hit the back wall. Now you're probably thinking, but Philip, I need to know how to hit the ball after it's hit the back wall because that's where I have the most trouble. And I do understand what you're saying. However, the swing, whether the ball is hit before it hits the back wall or after the back wall is exactly the same more or less. The difference is the positioning of the shoulders and the feet. Now, of course, that might affect the swing, but essentially it's the same swing. And these photos better demonstrate the point that I'm trying to make than the ones where people have taken the ball off the back wall. So that's why I've done it. All of the links to the photos and the pages I found the photos can be found in the text description if you're re interested in reading more about those. For this video, I'll be using my tablet to look at the photos, but I'll obviously enlarge the photos in this area for you to see. And I might even uh, put little markers on those photos to highlight those things. So anyway, let's get started. So this first photo is from the New Mexico Squash Rackets Association, and it's for the Kiva uh, Squash Open. And I don't know the player in this particular photo. It comes from 2007. And what I really, 2017, sorry. What I really want you to notice is that the racket head is actually below the height of his wrist. Now he's about to come forward. Now his positioning is beautiful, he's well balanced, he's got a lot of distance between his feet so he hasn't wasted any energy. He's watching the ball, he looks very relaxed, very impressed with what I see here. But it's this position, it's this position of his racket is lower than his um, wrist. Now, of course it started higher, but it came down. And this is the photo that I said that I saw and I said, oh, this is beautiful. He's about to turn his, uh, move his arm around, bring his forearm around. He's not going to break his wrist. He's going to bring his forearm around. And that's just a beautiful position. If nothing else, if you started your racket in the position that this player has here, that would be perfect as well. You could just take it and bring it forward. All right, on to the next, position, uh, next, next video. Now this, I won't even try and pronounce this person's name, but it's from a uh, website called Squash in Thailand. And you can almost see exactly the same position. We've got a really good view here of how he's elongated his grip. So you can see the space there. And again, you can see that the racket head is at the same height as the, fore, uh, as the wrist. In addition, 
It's open, and by open I mean the side that is going to hit the ball is facing up. And this is the problem with the broken wrist that you think that when you first start playing, you need to do this to get the ball out of the corner. You can see that the racket side, the side that I'm going to make contact with the ball is downwards, which means you have to do some kind of scooping motion. If you start with your wrist like this, the racket is open and as you come around, see the angle of the racket head there? That's the point of contact more or less. It's going to be going upwards. But if you come here, you can see that it's flat and it might not make the front wall. So you have to do this motion. So the key here is that his racket or their rackets are in this position. And as they come around with their forearm, it doesn't work very well on this screen. As they come around with their forearm, the racket face is open, but their wrist is still firm. Again, positioning of the body is really good. Watching the ball is not too close. Uh, stretching, really, really nice. Now, the next one in the series is, again, from, um, from this, the same tournament, which is, uh, which is, Mm, this one, okay. So this is with the pink t-shirt. Now he's much closer to the to the ball. He's possibly even taking the ball off the back wall. The opponent is on the tee, whereas the other shots the opponent wasn't on the tee. That's why it's less likely he was taking the ball off the back wall. And again, you've got this left hand that's out of the way. It's it's underneath. You've got the racket coming down but it's not as low as the other photos but it's going to drop down because you can see the sort of the motion and he's going to be able to turn his wrist and move his forearm sorry he's going to move his forearm round again that's the key yes it might start high but it drops down maybe not exactly like i'm demonstrating here there might be some shortened area but if you are having trouble in the back corners even if you just started with your racket here and brought your racket around like that you would have much more success all right again i don't know who this particular player is might even be the same player i don't know um so uh that was that and then number four now, this is somebody who you probably know. This is Marwan El Shabagi. Now, this is obviously much later on in the swing cycle or the swing sequence. And at this point, the racket head is above the wrist. Now, that doesn't mean that always that has to be true. Uh, it just means that for this bounce of ball, it is. But what I want you to notice is the extension of the finger, the concentration of the ball, on the ball. The fact that he's not broken his wrist, he's got a very firm wrist, he's making contact with the ball behind him. And that is a key thing that might have to happen when you play shots in the back corner. You can't always hit it where you want to, which is maybe just a little bit in front of your knee. You have to hit it behind. And that is another reason why this type of grip works. Because if you've got this, you can't be hitting the ball parallel. Look, imagine that this is where I'm making contact. Forget my body position. If my wrist is bent, it has to be, the point of contact has to be behind the wrist. If my wrist is um, cocked, I can even move it backwards and I can still have the ball go parallel to the wall. And that is a key thing. If you break your wrist, you cannot hit the ball parallel when making contact with the ball behind you. Keeping your wrist firm, we often talk about cocking your wrist, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees, but it does have to be not this. So this would be enough. You can make contact behind the ball. Now, again, what we've got going on here is he's positioned his body exactly the way the previous three photos were, dropped the racket down, came round, the ball was a little bit higher, so he just made contact with the ball uh, uh, at this particular point. It's going to go, perhaps it's even going to go cross court. It's hard to tell from this angle. Definitely he could hit it straight if he want to, but he could go cross court. So that's the last one. And then the last one is from a Polish website. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of the website. It's from a city in Poland called Lodz. I hope I've even got that right. Now, I don't even know who these people are. And that's something that I should have mentioned in the introduction, that it's not important who these people are because good technique is good technique. If you had a photograph of a complete beginner 
doing something right, that photo would be perfect to use for this type of demonstration anyway. Doesn't matter that these people are professionals, just matters that we've got some really good photos. Now this particular one is different. Um, firstly notice that he's using the wrong foot or the classically the wrong foot and that's fine i'm not here to criticize that because often you don't have time to get onto the correct foot and you have to make you know you have to adapt to those situations improvise adapt overcome so he's um his footwork isn't as good as it could be now the reason it's better on the other foot is because you can probably see that that left leg is actually a little bit in the way whereas the right leg it's out of the way fine but again, notice he's got the extended finger. He's holding the racket, not at 90 degrees, maybe it's a bit less, but that's fine. He's about to drop down. He's going to keep his wrist firm and he's going to come under the ball and he's gonna be able to either boast it or got a feeling this one might be coming off the back wall, in which case hopefully he can go straight. So the, the, the key points, the takeaways, as the Americans like to say, the takeaways for this backhand are one, it's fine whatever position you want to do when you prepare, but you've got to get the racket down low. Two, you mustn't be breaking the wrist. If you break the wrist, you can't make contact with the ball behind you and go straight. Now, I'm not doing a very good job from the sofa position I'm sitting in, but um, you can probably see that I can hit the ball straight from here. But as soon as I break the wrist, I can't even show you how I would break the wrist and get the ball behind me. I can't show you because you can't do it. You need to keep the racket cocked or at least close to 90 degrees and then you can get the ball behind you. If you are absolutely struggling with getting the ball out of the back corner, start down here. In fact, that's how I start all my pupils with learning how to do the backhand don't care about the top part of the swing. I need to get the bottom part of the swing working first. Start here, and maybe this is another video, but many times I get my pupils to put their hand out here so that they can see that they're bringing the racket to much of an angle. Keep underneath. You could even do this for the backhand corners, but it's less comfortable because you're in the corner. Start low, keep the wrist firm, don't break the wrist. Those are the takeaways, the key points for the backhand in the corner for this video. On to the forehand side. So, here we go. Now, um, in this particular case, uh, what do we got forehand? Sorry, they're not all in uh, the first order. All right, the first one is from uh, US Squash Pro Series, and this is Chris Hansen. Now, the important thing to notice is not that he's left-handed, Left-handed people have beautiful swings. I don't know why that's true. Again, notice that we've got the space between the fingers. We've got the grip. We've got the key point here that I want to stress is that the racket head is behind the forearm and the wrist. You, A lot of beginners, when they're trying to get the ball out of the corner, they try and do this motion. But you want to get the racket here and you want to do this motion. This is the motion that you're going to have to do and it will be beautifully shown in the bonus points uh, photos, photos at the end. So you, this is the key that I want you to take away from here. You need to get your racket in this position. And we often talk about skimming a stone and that's a beautiful idea as well. What you need to do is I like to say point the racket, the racket head up. To point the butt of the racket towards the ball. So that way you get here and you get low. Now the next one is from the uh, the Malaysia, sorry, The Star, which is a website in Malaysia. Don't know, I do know the name of this person, but again, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. Um, no, that's not, that's wrong. Bear with me while I look for my photos, my apologies. It's a live recording. All right, here it is, here it is. Right, now, um, we've got the same thing. We've got the, the, the incorrectly, the, the, the foot. The foot is not the best foot, but again, that's another discussion. He's left-handed again, but he's got the extension of the finger, really, really important, and he's got this racket here. Now, the racket, the ball is not particularly low. When he's going to make contact with the ball, he doesn't have to drop his racket down, but the next videos you will see that when the ball is low, you do need to do that. But again, it's hanging back, it's this position. It's not this, 
it's this and that's really really important right now the next photo is from somebody who is um, big news at the moment and this is Mostafa Asal uh, there we go and this is from the PSA tour now this ball is much lower and you can see his racket head is facing upward the side that he's going to hit the ball is facing upward and it's not lower than his forearm at the moment but it's about to come low and he's about to use this motion to get the ball out of the corner again notice he's he's on what we would consider to be the wrong leg because it opens up the shoulders you've got a better reach with it but that's fine um, he's he's balanced he's not actually have his left foot is not on the floor but that again that's not a criticism I'm not here to criticize these people we're just we're just looking he's well balanced he's got his left hand out but it's here it's racket head low and behind the wrist so photo nine this is from the Columbia Spectator this is uh, two ladies playing squash and I have no idea who they are how good they are but what I can see is I can see this position again okay this is the key here the racket is behind the forearm is going to be doing the work there's no going to be breaking the wrist it's all going to be in forearm and she's beautifully prepared she's got a heel on the floor she's just about to transfer her weight into the ball so it's all going to be timed perfectly and she could be going anywhere probably not cross court because that would be a slightly um dangerous position although the opponent there would be at fault for not giving her most of the front wall to hit the ball on so remember the elbow's quite close the racket is leaning back so now we're on to this polish website and this is where we've got the uh the man in the corner fantastic video look at how low he is focused on the ball racket head same height as the wrist when compared to the floor and that's what i've been telling you both forehand and backhand you have to get the racket head down if you don't you can't come around with your forearm like this and you won't be able to hit the ball cleanly this is this is a great photo he's got the shortest possible circle with the for the wrist in the center and the top of the racket as the outside of the center which means he can get maximum power so then he'll be able to hit the ball quite hard back down the wall probably possibly cross court um, and get the ball going time for the bonus section so let's have a quick look here so this is uh mustafa asal again and i'm not particularly happy with his grip but again i'm not here to criticize this particular player he is the future he's without doubt a future world number one but what i want you to look at is how he's had to hit the ball he's literally had to hit it like this he's made contact when the ball is behind him now he's had to make some adjustment with his grip um, because it's gone behind him and that's what he's doing now it looks like he's he, I mean, the way I'm holding it is because I'm sort of sitting down. So it looks like I've broken my wrist, but he hasn't really broken his wrist. His wrist is still sort of here. You can probably see that. He, he's, not doing, he's not doing this. But sometimes you have to do that motion, but it's all part of the swing. So again, as I said right at the beginning, sometimes these photos are not necessarily the things that I would like my club players to do, but it just shows you that sometimes you have to make and um, you have to adapt and then the last photo is back to Chris Hansen and he's doing almost exactly the same thing although the shot in this case is the ball is not as far behind him as uh, it was for Mustafa so he doesn't have to use his his um, forearm in this particular way but again look what he's done he's making contact with the ball in this case his racket head is a little bit higher than the the wrist but that's because where the ball is and that's really what has to happen I'm not saying that the racket head always has to be below the wrist because it's where the ball is but in the back corners the ball will probably be low and you'll want to get behind it and underneath it so these last two bonus bonus photos were just to show you that sometimes you do need to make some adaptations you do need to maybe break from the technically correct swing because you do need to get the ball be uh, out of the corner and specifically with the one from Mustafa he's hitting the ball look 
it's behind his foot. I mean, I can't see exactly from this angle, but it looks like it's behind his foot. So he's having to do whatever he can to get the ball out of the corner. All right, so that's the photo coaching for today. Hopefully that you found it useful. As always, if you've got any questions about any of the photos or getting the ball out of the corners, just post a comment and I will do my best to reply as quickly as possible. This is a subscribe button. If you think my channel is useful and the videos I make are useful for you, please consider subscribing. This is a list of all of the other photo coaching videos. That's the playlist. And this is a video that YouTube thinks will be interesting for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.